you said something there where people with type 2 diabetes are using an all-meat diet to actually reverse the condition. I want to get to that in a second, but let's set the scene of somebody that develops type 2 diabetes. What is actually happening in the body over years to get to that point? And then we'll talk about reversal. Yeah, so the the most likely thing, and I don't think anybody knows for sure, but the most likely theory is, is that if you continuously, meal after meal, day after day, eat a high carbohydrate diet, all carbohydrates turn into sugar. All carbohydrates are made of sugar. And the only carbohydrates that don't break down into sugar in your body is insoluble fibers. All other, the starches, all of them break down into literal sugar. Uh, in many cases, they start to do this in your mouth before you even swallow them because you have an enzyme called amylase that is in your saliva. And so somebody, if they are like, no, whole wheat bread doesn't have any sugar in it, uh, you can just take a bite of whole wheat bread. I mean, the organic, non-GMO, ancient wheat bread. I'm not talking about white bread, right, from Save-A-Lot. And chew it 50 times and then take a glucose detector strip. You can buy these at the pharmacy and just touch it to your tongue and watch it turn. It, you've already started to break down the starch in the bread to sugar. When you eat a diet like that every single day, and uh, many people following a plant-based diet are drinking fruit juice smoothies and eating whole grain bread and lots of fruits and vegetables. That's the way it's always said, right? Well, they're keeping their blood sugar constantly high, which is in turn going to keep their insulin level constantly high. So the insulin's trying to push this glucose into muscle cells and other cells, try to get it out of the bloodstream because it's very damaging if it stays in your bloodstream. And the way we know this is because of type 1 diabetics before we had insulin decades ago, they would be dead by the age of 12, 15, maybe 20 if they were lucky because of the severe damage that's done by chronically high blood sugars. And so your pancreas produces more and more insulin trying to push this glucose out of the bloodstream so it's not damaging the eyes, damaging the brain, damaging the heart, damaging the kidneys. But if your cells are already full of glucose, there's nowhere else to push it. And so your pancreas just keeps making more and more insulin in this blind attempt to get the, the glucose out of your bloodstream. Well, after years and years of that, your A1C starts to elevate. Because for the first few years, your, your pancreas can push enough of it out to keep your blood sugar close to normal. But after years and years of that, your pancreas just can't do it. And it's not that your pancreas burns out or stops making insulin. 95% of the time in type 2 diabetics, that's not true at all. If you check an insulin level, they're making not only a normal amount, but way more than they should be making because they're eating so many carbohydrates. This is a pretty well-established mechanism here. We've, we've kind of known this since the 1930s, 1940s, that if you eat too much uh, saccharine, that's the old word for it. Now we would just call it sugar uh, in any form, any kind of carbohydrate, you're going to eventually develop type 2 diabetes. Now, some people do this much more quickly than others. Some people within six months of adopting a high carbohydrate diet, they're going to start, they're going to have prediabetes. Some people, it takes six years. Some people it takes 20 years, but we all are moving towards that, moving in that direction if you're eating a high carbohydrate diet. And so uh, if for, for your listeners who are not nutritionists or dietitians, meat is the lowest carbohydrate food on the planet that you can eat that's still nutrient dense. And so to, to imply that eating red meat increases your risk of type 2 diabetes, it flies in the face of every physiological mechanism we know about human glucose and insulin and glucagon metabolism. Are you ever left wondering whether these dietary and lifestyle changes you're making are actually having an impact on your health? This is where Inside Tracker comes in. You get a personalized picture of what's happening inside your body and a custom action plan to help you reach your health goals. There's five steps to the process. First one being choosing your health plan. Second, you get your blood work done and they make this really easy. They can come right out to the house. Step three is to get your analysis. Step four is to implement your custom action plan. And then step five is to retest and recalibrate. And that last step you can do periodically over time 
to continue to monitor what's happening inside your body and continue to tweak your diet and lifestyle. As a viewer of the show, you get 20% off Inside Tracker by following the link in the description and using the code JESSE20 at checkout. Sign up for Inside Tracker today to get a personalized picture of what's happening inside your body and a custom action plan to help you reach your health goals. Well, let's take the story even further and talk about the playbook for somebody that is in that position of having type 2 diabetes or insulin resistance, which is along that continuum. So what you're saying here, and, and I want to further expand, is that meat doesn't raise insulin, doesn't spike blood glucose. So obviously a big part of this is to change the diet. We want to eliminate carbs or at least bring the carbs down. Naturally, we're going to increase the meat to fill in the gap when it comes to calories and, right. and substance. You have to eat something. Yeah. So let's talk about how far we need to take that. If we're eating like a regular type diet now and we want to start reversing this, you know, at one end of the continuum is carnivore, no carbs. But typically, how far does somebody need to push it in the no carb realm or low carb to start to get the benefits and reverse things? Yeah, it's a, that's a great question. First, let me correct one little thing that we missed earlier. So eating meat does raise your insulin a modest amount, but it doesn't raise it nearly as high as eating a starchy carbohydrate. Uh, fat, pure fat, barely increases your insulin level at all. So we have the three macronutrients, uh, carbohydrates, fat, and protein. The carbohydrates spike your insulin because it turns into pure sugar and your insulin has to do something with that. Protein does raise your insulin a modest amount. Fat barely raises it at all. Uh, so with that being said, there is this thing, this concept in all of biology, but it applies to human biology as well. It's known as the normal distribution curve right? And so most people are going to fall here. A few people will fall here and a few people will fall here. Uh, and that, that applies to everything you can talk about in animal biology and therefore human biology. So there are some people uh, who are eating two or 300 grams of carbohydrates, total carbohydrates a day, but they're doing that because they're following the American Diabetes Association's handout. And they're making the recipes on the American Diabetes Association website. And they're, they're not a dietitian. They're not counting carbs. They don't know. Now, type 1 diabetics have to count the carbs. And they have to also count the grams of protein because both of those will raise your insulin. And they have to adjust their insulin uh, intake to accommodate that. Um, so some people, it, what, what I would recommend for anybody who's currently a type 2 diabetic is to either download uh, either Carb Manager or chronometer, and I'm sure there's other macro trackers you can download and use for free on your phone. And the first thing I want you to do is track how many total carbohydrates you're eating a day and do that for a week or two. Now you've got your baseline because everybody's different. Some people are eating 150 grams a day. Some people are eating 350 grams a day. So the first thing you need to know as a type 2 diabetic is how many total carbs am I eating a day? Now you've got a number to work with. That's kind of your benchmark. So I'm currently eating 350 grams of total carbohydrates a day. And my A1C is currently 11, let's say, right? Which is terrible. Okay, now what you're going to do is you're going to cut that down. Cut it, cut it back to 200 grams or 150 grams a day. That's still going to give you plenty of room for vegetables, even a slice of whole grain bread if you want that, uh, for, for some fruits for some nuts. And then also, I hope you're including fatty red meat in that diet as well, because you need the nutrition contained in meat. And so then you're going to recheck your hemoglobin A1C every three months. And so after three months of going from, say, 250 grams of carbs a day down to, and you, then you're going to do three months of 150 total grams of carbs max. Then you're going to go back to your doctor and you're going to get your hemoglobin A1C. And I also want you to ask for a fasting insulin as well every time you ask for an A1C. Now, if you're currently injecting insulin, then you can't check a fasting insulin. That'll give you a false value. You're going to check a C-peptide. Okay, that is a proxy marker for how much insulin your pancreas is secreting. And it's not affected by exogenous insulin that you might be injecting or inhaling. And so then let's say now your A1C's come down to eight. 
boom, that's a great improvement, but you're not where you want to be yet. So now you're going to go from 150 total a day down to 175 total grams of carbs a day. Do that for 90 days, then recheck the A1C and the fasting insulin. What is it now? Let's say, oh, now it's down to 6.2. Huzzah. That's a great improvement. Now you're you're no longer type 2 diabetic. Now you only have pre-diabetes. Great victory. You're decreasing the amount of damage done to every small artery in your body by orders of magnitude. This is a huge improvement, but you're not there yet. So then let's say, okay, you're like, well, I want I want a normal A1C by George. I deserve that. I agree. So now you're going to cut it down to 50 total grams of carbs a day and then do it for 90 days and then recheck those two tests. Let's say it's down to 5.7 now. Man, you're so close because 5.6 is normal. You still got the tiniest touch of prediabetes now. And so that's why most people wind up on a proper human diet spectrum, which is anywhere from 100 total grams of carbs a day. For some people, that'll reverse their type 2 diabetes. Some people have to go to 50 total grams. Some people have to go to 20, which is ketogenic. Some people have to go to 10, which is ketovore. Some people have to go to as close to zero carbs a day as they can get to get their A1C back to normal, and that is a carnivore diet. So this spectrum, you're going to have some people that 100, that does it. Most people, somewhere between 20 and 70, that's going to get them out of the type 2 diabetes danger zone. But some people on this end of the normal distribution curve are going to have to go 10 total grams or less a day in order to reverse their type 2 diabetes. And so that it, it's very simple. And the, that's the beauty of it, Jesse, is that you don't need a degree in nutrition. You don't need a degree in epidemiology. You just figure up your total carbs and then cut it in half. Wait three months, check the test. If that did it, huzzah. If that didn't do it, Cut it in half again and keep doing that until you wind up with a normal A1C and probably just as importantly, also a normal fasting insulin. When you've got those two numbers normal, then you know you're eating a species specific, but also individual specific proper amount of total daily carbohydrate. I'm glad you clarified at the beginning there that piece of meat still having a response with insulin. Yeah. I'm curious, as you say that, getting to think about the physiology and nuance there, does that come from gluconeogenesis or glycogen that's within that muscle meat or a combination of the two? I'm just trying to understand what, what's going on there. A combination of those two, but they, they're probably minor players. But so insulin is a hugely important hormone in the human body. It does push glucose out of the bloodstream into the cells, and many people think that's its primary job, but it also does hundreds of other things as well, one of which is protein metabolism, breaking, helping you break that protein down and get it where it needs to be. And so uh, that's uh, there's multiple reasons that eating just like a, a skinless, boneless chicken breast, that's going to raise your insulin a modest amount, not the spike you see with carbs. But the the insulin has many, many jobs in the human body, and one of them is helping to uh, put the the protein where it goes when you've ingested it. And actually, people find when they're on a carnivore or a ketogenic diet that if they'll eat a fatty cut of red meat, like a type 1 diabetic, if they're doing keto or or carnivore, they don't have to inject as much insulin as if they eat a a low-fat or a fat-free cut of meat like uh, fat-free turkey deli meat or a, a boneless, skinless chicken breast, they actually have to inject a little more insulin with that load of protein than they would if the protein were paired with the fat that occurs with the protein naturally. So if you're eating a chicken breast, leave the skin on and leave the bone in, and you won't have to inject as much insulin that way because the fat helps to moderate that. If you enjoyed that clip, press here for the full episode. I'll see you over there. Any disease you can think of that's chronic and progressive, it's being caused by hyperglycemia, hyperinsulinemia, and chronic inappropriate levels of inflammation. Your default setting is good health. And if you're not enjoying good health,